Welcome. On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we give you the warmest welcome to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I have the pleasure to be the moderator of today's session. Today, we have the pleasure to welcome one of the most distinguished badminton coaches in the world. I'm talking about Bi Hong Yang from France, who is going to talk about a very important subject, training experiences in Asia and Europe, characteristics. But before leaving you with her, I would like to read a short summary about our guest's career. As an athlete, she participated in three Olympic Games, Athens 2004, London 2012, and Beijing 2008, where she finished in fifth place. For 10 years, she was among the top 10 in the world. She reached her best world ranking in 2005, when she was top two. As a coach, she is Babolat ambassador and consultant. She also has a master's degree in sports organizations management from the Aix Marseille University. She also was a high level coach from the University of Sichuan, China. Good afternoon, dear Bi Hong Yang. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us to your home in Marseille. Please share your screen. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be able to share my experience with you. I had the pleasure to train in three different countries, Denmark, China, and France. Today, my presentation is going to be a little bit about the experiences I lived in these different countries. And of course, I'm also going to talk about the, the techniques. So we're going to see the evolution in these countries, but my presentation will be mainly based on what I lived. In other words, my personal experiences, which started when I was very young until the very end of my career. And even nowadays, in which I have a small role as a coach for young athletes in France. I'm going to talk about talent detection and selection in China, how to choose future champions, the progression path uh, towards performance in the National Center, the variations and the different pro training programs in Europe, uh, accompanying athletes in France. Also, I'm going to compare the different training methods and volumes. And at the end, I'm going to uh, reach some conclusions and share some reflections. When we're young, uh, coaches, uh, recruiters, in recruit um, si children from six to eight years old in primary school. Size is very important. So that's because they want you to reach certain uh, height when you are 15 years old. And we train twice a week. Sometimes we train uh, after school in the evening. So in order to participate in this training um in, you need to be motivated because if you don't, you won't be able to stay very long if you don't follow the schedule. They, children need to be really motivated to learn as well. So we compare uh, boys and girls to see their performance and this helps uh, them to find financial aid, which will help them throughout their careers. Between 11 and 13 years old, uh, athletes participate at a provincial level. Provincial coaches observe athletes and select the best ones so they could do high-performance training. The, these uh, 
lasts from three to six months. And four boys and four girls are chosen to go to, to a second longer uh, practice time that lasts six months. And during that time, they will see their physical skills. In or so they can go to the provincial center when they reach 13 years old. So uh, athletes need to pass uh, physical tests, which includes uh, 60 meter, 100 meter sprints, double jumps, uh, moving from side to side uh, in the court and so on and so forth. Also, uh, they need to pass psychological tests where they need to answer certain questions that Um, many times don't have much to do with badminton. It's, it's really to know about uh, their ability to reflect. And, but there are also genetic tests where they will be able to uh, see that how much you will grow and so on. Then... The when they when you become 18 years old, when you turn t 13 years old, you are considered a professional athlete at that point in time, and that's why the state pays for your studies, so you have a scholarship. When you are 15 years old, you start participating, practicing at a national level. This is orga organized in uh, in different uh, provincial centers. Many times we have one or two generations. We also see that these last for a specific period of time, there are three weeks of training and one week of competitions after doing this training and this is organized by the national coaches and the provincial coaches and this allows them to see the different methods that are available coaches also exchange their knowledge amongst them and all the physical results from the competitions from the matches everything is evaluated so At the end of the day, 35 teenagers are uh, chosen boys and girls in order to create a very interesting program which will be permanent. Training is uh, done with them all together. Seven will be chosen to play doubles when they are 15 to 16 years old. There is a competition where they are selected at the National Center in Beijing in order to be part of the junior team. At the National Center, we have a team, team one and team two. They're the same, but That allows you to go to the sports center. So trainings are organized between team one and team two. Once the selection was done in Beijing, there are certain matches. And uh, athletes in those teams can be changed from one team to the other every year. The Olympic uh, winner in Sydney 2000 was in team one and that was thanks to the system. We usually played on Wednesday evenings and did a simulation of a match in order to improve our level. There were other um, methods. So the, the idea was to see the different capabilities and skills of each team in order to, and they did this in order to choose their favorite athlete. I wasn't chosen as my coach's uh, favorite because 
because I wasn't aggressive enough, even though I had potential during the match. I showed, during matches, I showed that I, I, I wasn't that aggressive, and that's why I um, got to, I reached the third place. But at the end of the day, I uh, was able to move up to uh, team one, but then I was, uh, I was moved to team two, and they always favored size and how they were using the space uh, in the field of play. Uh, team two was also very, had also a lot of potential as well, but only the best two or three could stay and move up to team one. For my generation, Well, China is very strong in terms of the women's team. We have a national team that has a possibility to reach a worldwide level, but only one team can participate in the international competitions. The, uh, the others stay in China without hopes, without competing. So it is possible to reach this level, but you need to have an objective, a goal, but without a specific goal, it's not possible to reach that level. There are four national competitions per year, and the ones who don't uh, get a spot, they're not taken into account. There was a point in time when I said, I don't want to play badminton anymore because I'm never going to reach that level. I'm not never going to get that spot. But now let's talk a little bit about what we do in order to s follow the progression of athletes in China. From the very beginning of our learning process, we do repetitions. Of the essential uh, shots, the basic shots, which is the foundation for everything. Uh, boys and girls practice together. We hit the shuttle against a wall. And we keep doing that. We do uh, straight shots, cross shots. Uh, we do backhand shots. We tried to f make, do our shots just as the model that was given to us in order to train well. And that's w how we began um that's how we moved to um, the court. We played mid-court. We trained twice a day. And then we focused on the physical work. We needed to have flexibility. We went up the stairs or jump in order to work on plyometrics and coordination. We had to learn a very specific um, double jump. And when we started practicing... When we were uh, 11 years old, we started training three times a day. So we practiced uh, in the morning. And then we had two more trainings. So one was very early in the morning. from uh, It was from 6 to 7.30. Then we would go to school. And then in the afternoon, we would train again. We would focus on badminton. And then in the evening for one more hour uh, every night to practice the shot techniques. Uh, straight shots, cross shots. So this was a so this this was in order to perfect our technique and so it could be done automatically, not only in terms of precision but also uh, for visual fluidity and the movement coordination. Tests are already set. Since you're seven years old, in order to continue perfecting all techniques until you get to the National Center, which is the highest level. Also to reach the highest intensity. So but everyone had to be able to train in the evening. And this training was not part of the official training but perfecting gestures and our movement evolution um, kept uh, teaching us different notions of the badminton shots in a 
and we also had short gestures and dry gestures, how to hit the shuttle and the cord. And these techniques could would be different depending on the province and the coach who's uh, coaching you. Now, physical preparation starts from the very beginning when you start learning. You have to in,、uh, increase your physical ability from the very beginning, and we're always、um, uh, working, we always work on physical work. And we have physical training every day. We have different types of exercises individually、uh, as a group to also work、uh, our force and strength with weights. I became really strong thanks to、uh, this training I had since I was a child. The Chinese badminton team has always. Uh, valued. Physical work a lot. After its participation in Barcelona, they said that every athlete who wanted to participate in a Chinese championship had to pass the physical tests、uh, during competitions,、uh, team competitions. That's something that、uh, is known by every province. You need to work, work, work in order to pass these exams. And there are two categories. Which include coordination, flexibility,、uh, endurance,、uh, agility, and there are two individual tests back then in my time. You had to do five sprints,、uh, long distance running, 500 meters,、uh, five times, and then do 5,000 meters, and then five blocks.、Uh, Of jumping from one side to the other, we had a lot of exercises to train our、uh, to work our abs on our abs. So nowadays, these tests has become have become mandatory in China. You could say that I'm not there. I'm not a very strong person, even if I worked on that. But the physical test that we had to pass back then in China, well, it is true that each one of us had to, to do it on our own, and. I was I was usually behind everyone, so my performance wasn't that good. But for example, I wasn't good at the exercise where I had to jump from side to side for five hundred meters, for fifteen minutes. I was only able to do that halfway. I was only able to do that once. So that was something that. I mean, they would give us、uh, additional weight on、uh, every side, so we could improve our strength in the national. At the in the national center of Beijing, we had to do exercises, where we had to、uh, climb up a mountain.、Uh, At bus would take the team to the mountain, and then we had to go upstairs, up the mountain, and we had to do that in twenty five minutes, and that、uh, in order to reach it three minutes high. And yeah, some people who were fast could do it in twenty two, twenty three minutes. But the very first time that I did that, I cried so much because I had to do it twice because you cannot、uh, take、uh, longer than twenty five minutes. Because if you do so,、uh, then you have to、um, do that same work for ten thousand meters in the sand. So these、uh, prepare. You not only physically but also mentally. It doesn't matter if it rains, snows, if it's hot. When our sweat would freeze,、uh, well, actually that helped us、uh, prepare ourselves mentally. So this mountain,、uh, this climbing up this mountain would help us, and that's I have a lot of memories of this, and this is a tradition. It has become、um, a unique memory in my mind, you could say. After I became a professional athlete, when I、um, was thirteen years old, I would start writing in a training journal. I would, I would, you have, would have to write there, um, everything. So the coach would read these and give us advice, uh, on our 
how we were doing, if we were in shape, our state of fatigue. And the plan was to analyze these in order to practice throughout the week. And you would have to write these every, every day. And uh, we would have to answer questions at the end of the week. So we would have all of this information written down and then we would have a meeting with uh, coaches and the uh, team leader who had a team project and some time to, this was some time to make any changes. So these training journals helped us to reflect on the activities that we uh, were doing and this uh, made us active participants of our training. This was also a way to communicate with our coaches because before that we uh, wouldn't be able, we weren't able to ask any question to the coaches. We would just follow orders. In China, even though you would see something in an individual, every achievement is consider a group achievement our main goal is to uh, win medals and have good performance in order to get to the national team so there are coaches who are considered like a strategic bank of advice and those that's also analyzed in in order to progress and they would see our potential. We also uh, take ad advice from uh, older coaches who had more experience uh, in case we had the difficulties in our training. Also, um, old champions in China are reused as coaches in provinces. Um, they would coach uh, young athletes. Some of them also stay in the National Center and work as coach assistants. Uh, at the beginning, so China has, after some time, China has started to uh, hire foreign uh, coaches from uh, America and Europe, but that's uh, strange, that's, that's not so common. I think the last year, for the first time, we had a Korean coach who was hired. I don't know how long he stayed, but we saw him there for a while. In 2011, I was able to play with a club in Grev in Denmark. And that was a completely new experience uh, to leave China and actually see the badminton culture in another country, in a different country. I would train in the club in the mornings and in the afternoons. Uh, and I trained in the IBA, which is International Badminton Academy, with people who come from everywhere in the world. They come from teams. Uh, from Norway, Finland, England... Guatemala, uh, Anna from Canada, Stephen from Scotia, from Scotland, Kevin from uh, Iran. So there were many others who had who went there to train as well, and twice a week. Um, the world champions would also go there to train and and as well as other world uh, champions uh, were part of, of that uh, group training in the IBA. Uh, I pretty much I, I didn't play doubles much in China so uh, but I would but I trained that in the IBA so that made me uh, learn more. Uh, Friday nights we would uh, train technique and I had a coach who would uh, help me with that in Denmark. He's, he has shared his, ex his training experience. He shared his training experience so I learned a lot from him. His analysis and advice was very detailed. Uh, so 
training in the IBA was an advantage uh, for me because it helped me to expand my knowledge and, and before going back to China. And I saw the difference in training and also the environment was very nice. I really liked uh, I really liked training there. I was full of energy every Monday. Also uh, sharing experiences with the different girls in my group. We always had uh, good uh, advice on uh, the Smash, for example. Everyone spoke in English in the group. So there was a very good environment in the, this academy. When we uh, were in training, we would eat together. So friendship was really important to me be when I uh, left China in order to train in a different country. Uh, and the National Center also uh, trained uh, in matches with Camila. That was also very interesting for me because in China, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to train with the best of the team. The ability to play uh, against her and sometimes even uh, beat her would give me a lot of confidence in myself. She also gave me a lot of practical advice so I would uh, make progress. When I finally left the uh, National Center, I mean, before going to the IBA, I wasn't very hopeful. I wasn't uh, really confident in myself, but this allowed me to uh, gain that back and uh, to reach a high level in Denmark. Uh, I, uh, I lived a different training culture. They would uh, explain each exercise in very in detail before uh, doing them. Uh, coaches would explain that uh, before doing the, the, each exercise. Uh, in China, the uh, coaches wouldn't do that. They would just tell us what to do, and that would be it. Uh, in Denmark, they would explain us, uh, and we would have a discussion on what we had to do. We had competitions, physical preparation. So I discovered that uh, coaches there uh, were also the ones who uh, manage everything. So training is hard, and but uh, they last... Uh, less time uh, and its volume is smaller, but they are quite intense. Uh, each athlete would give 200% in everything. And there was also some camaraderie that would between us and, and the coach because he would push us to go uh, further in order to do our best. So that was, that was, there was a feeling of helping each other and that uh, helped us uh, do things uh, better. Athletes would uh, exercise, w would uh, do physical preparation a lot, and many times you have to do your sessions on your own, and you have to find free time in order to do this in a qualitative way, and you you had, you had to, to do it on your own. In China, we would train a lot. But in China, we would have a lot of volume and training load was very important. But so we would cheat a little bit sometimes because if you do, we, we would say, uh, if you don't cheat, you will you won't be able to do it because you had to show numbers and that's it. But in Denmark, this was different. Uh, it was a nice surprise. Team one and team two had to coach everyone in the uh, center on Friday afternoon. In Friday afternoon, so we had a group of five or six uh, young athletes who were getting ready to compete or who were uh, working the court. So we had to guide them, and this is a tradition for clubs. Clubs are also part of the development of uh, the badminton performance. In April twenty. 2003, I started at INSEP in France. If you don't know what INSEP is, it's the National Institution uh, of Performance Expert Sports Performance Expertise. I was part of the French team in 2002, and it was a change uh, to me. It was an experience that uh, I followed until the end of my uh, career. This was similar to what I lived in the National Center in China, that groups 
all which puts together the training and the studies and we would live there at INSEP and different um, Olympic disciplines would train there. The difference is that in China, well, in France, uh, they um, athletes have to do both projects, the studies and uh, uh, the sport. They have to do it in parallel. In China, that's not so. So uh, in France, you would do a couple of hours, you would train a couple of hours, you would study a couple of hours, you would train and then you would study and so on. And in the afternoon, in, in the evening, you would train. So to me, it was a little bit difficult to adapt because I didn't have uh, enough time to do everything. Um, between noon and two o'clock, I had uh, time to take a short nap, uh, but I, sometimes I even couldn't do that. So I was trying to adapt myself. I, I would get really tired. Many times I thought that I had to uh, have uh, two cups of coffee in order to be awake because it, it was uh, very tiring. I had to be focused. Since 2003, international competitions started to become more intense because I was already part of the French team. And that's how I started Uh, working in order to uh, qualify to the Olympics. So we would review what uh, we did in order to see how we could do our uh, training plan. And I had discussions with Fabrice, my coach, uh, about the need, my, about my needs. So I knew that Fabrice was able, was willing to listen to what I had to say because in the Chinese style, that's not so... They just give you a certain volume and that's it. They don't take into account what's most convenient for us. But here, physical preparation was different. They guide you in Denmark. Physical preparation had to be done on your own. We didn't have a coach on physical preparation like in France. So I really liked uh, training with this coach on physical preparation who... Uh, had already worked with many other athletes, so he did a plan with weightlifting and so on and so forth, and he w would explain why this was necessary and how we had to do each movement, every always uh, related to how you were supposed to breathe and so on and so forth. So I, fin I would finish my training without being tired in the beginning. So I, w I, w I w thought, hey, this is weird. I should be tired, right? But then I discovered that I could work on my physical preparation in a different way. What's important is that INSEPT would adapt to our needs. Each one of us had cert, uh, certain specifications, and we would and uh, we would adapt our the, they would adapt the method, so we could make progress, and that was great. Between two thousand five to and two thousand six. Uh, we reached world class and we were ready. So to me, this was a new because before I didn't want to take, to talk with anyone in, in order to share it. Uh, to, to prepare myself mentally because I thought that they're going to know my secrets as my Buddhist uh, coach would t tell me when I was younger. But it was a bit difficult sometimes in France because I had feelings who were in conflict at the, in the beginning. But little by little, this th there was a natural transition. But I think that I wouldn't have been able to keep that rhythm back then because mental Preparation was difficult for me at the beginning. I'm going to explain that uh, later. In France, what was most different was the your, the partner you're going to train with, which is different uh, from what I what they do in Denmark. In France, this was a little bit more difficult because we were always training in the same place. So we were lucky enough to have a person who was a volunteer. And so your style of game could uh, l limit you a little bit. If you know Brief, well, he's from Indonesia. 
and he has won a world junior medal and he came to France at the same time I did. He's a very good friend. Uh, I, I'm friends with him and his, uh, his wife. So we had to train very hard because the other uh, male athletes in, in Seba were yeah, volunteer to play against me, but they wouldn't consider me their equal in training. So they had their own projects with the other women. Well, they, they, the other women left to other centers, so they left me alone with the boys, with the men. So in order to find someone to train with was a bit difficult. And that's why in international competitions, I had to... Uh, train with a profile of a different country in order to work together. Also, there at INSEP, uh, medical medical staff there is very good there. They give you very good advice. They always help you with breathing at the end of the competitions. Uh, they also help us in case they're, they're, we have an injury. And the coach on physical preparation also help us in, to be in shape. But it's true that throughout my sports career, I've had small injuries. But I think that at INSEP, they were so professional that I had the best treatment and care when I finished when I was 32. Well, I got to finish when I was my career when I was 32 or 33 years old. And well, the French team had a lot of uh, foreign coaches. And that has happened in the last 25 years, maybe even more. There are a lot of English, Danish, Chinese, Bulgarian who have come to a coach. It's part of their career to go to different places in order to learn different methods and different badminton cultures. I think that each one of the coaches there have left their badminton vision in that center. It's true that ba the French badminton culture has a good mixture of different training methods. And that is why each generation who comes there, who goes there, has a good potential to actually win medals at a world, the global level. They have good training to learn and to improve their, their performance. We also have the junior class for junior athletes in Paris, and that helps you have a double project so you can train under good conditions and with a good, with an interesting uh, training volume. French athletes leave their project thanks to the support from the club and federation clubs, uh, do talent detection and uh, educate their athletes and there are um, competitions between club among all the clubs so everyone has a possibility to work as a team and to go to a competition I chose to work or to play for my club and this became my mental refuge uh, refugee as well in my time the federation also gave a lot of importance to financial support. All competitions are paid and we are always financed by the state. And medical support is also key during competitions. That's also paid. Uh, so athletes can only focus 100% uh, on their performance. Nowadays, uh, an athlete prefers to stay with their club and some others prefer to go to the federal to the federal level and the federation uh, adapts to each athlete's requirements and they want to help you and they give you the most uh, options possible to athletes i participated in three olympic games and the preparation for each olympic game is different in athens I became, I had been nationalized French a year before, so my preparation was a bit uh, short, mentally speaking. I think that that affected me a little bit, uh, that affected my training a little bit because I had 
um, an injury 10 days before my first match and that affected me and in Beijing I got to prepare myself really well I was in good shape but I think that my mental preparation wasn't uh, at a good level because I underestimated how I was going to feel by uh, playing against a, a Chinese athlete and the reaction of the audience uh, affected me a lot even though the, it, there were three sets it was quite fair I think that I was not I mean I didn't play the first set very well in order to actually win a medal and at the end well it wasn't that great, but well. In London, the pre my preparation for London was uh, very dif different because I was more older than 18 years old. I was more than eight, uh, 30 years old. I had had two operations in my knees. And my uh, my training that year before was pretty much none. I would uh, I had problems. I was very I was in pain. But thanks to the kinesiologist and the coach on physical preparation, I was able to um, come in shape little by little. But there was a point in which I thought, you know what, I have to give it my all in order to be in shape. So I ended. I finished in the. quarterfinals I think but well and my preparation in France uh, was different in comparison to other countries so I think that this is the way in which we uh, get ready in order to go to big competitions I think that that's important if I well this is a comparison table including the different training techniques well i've included here the years when i was in china denmark and france in china we've seen that volume is quite different in comparison well we have long training sessions the exchanges are long uh, in the case of denmark well this is different there was a, a middle point so between intensity and the length of the training session, which would depend on my needs because this time wouldn't evolve like it did in China. And we practiced different uh, methods and we had to adapt ourselves to them. Well, in China, training was regular as well as the ability to focus and the um, the shuttle control quality was really important. It was not about playing well at the beginning of the match, but also at the very end of the match, we had, that's, we had to play with the same precision and the same strength. That's why they trained us uh, for long periods of time. But in Denmark, this was different. They wanted to reach the highest uh, quality in speed uh, when hitting the shot, uh, when hitting the shuttlecock. Uh, so that was, there's a lot of tolerance for mistakes, but you had to, to be very focused. In France, we look for a little bit of both. Yeah, you needed to be consistent in terms of speed and intensity. So for us, Every method has its advantages and disadvantages. I think that for you can train like these, uh, you can train for a long time when you're young in order to understand the exercise and master the movements. My impression is that young athletes prefer training for a long time but many times they don't understand why they're doing it and they make a lot of mistakes and then they just think okay okay i finished this exercise so let's change but many times you have to do it again so i think that that's why you should have a mixture between what uh, china proposes what denmark proposes and what france proposes in order to achieve your set goal 
And now we're going to compare the volume of training. In China, we train a lot. If you see in this table, you can see that the training is twice as much when you're young and physical preparation is complemented by technical work. And on this slide, I think, well, I think that you're going to get this slide afterwards. So I'm not going to get in detail here. But either way, in this chart, we can see the age evolution in young athletes. A training volume actually changes depending on the country. This is just an approximation, of course, because each country is different, but you can tell how the level varies. For example, young Chinese athletes uh, focus a lot on technique and their surveys mid-court. And they also practice in the afternoons. And Danish young athletes have more private sessions on Sundays and those type of things. And well, in France, I think that technical learning a technique, uh, it's not uniform. Oh, at least that's what I observed when I would practice with other girls. But the learning method depends on the life experience of your coach and the objectives of the club. Also, the national technical directorate uh, started in the year 2019. The, the simple lady project, which includes athletes from... 8 to 15 years old, whose objective is to uh, train uh, girls according to the high, international high level, high performance level in order to identify those who could comply with the requirements to pass uh, these uh, pr um, programs successfully. And uh, they are chosen based on the... Um, recommendations of the coaches and I'm as an assistant in this group and I also work in, in Bordeaux and we also see how to we should assign these groups or, or we have a specific objective for this practice we um, have a technical work with this group in order to uh, master movements really well and have good arm rotation and in comparison to uh, Eastern countries. Uh, girls are more relaxed in comparison to boys, um, but they're all motivated to work. And, but both want to have a good sports level and you you can tell that they are really well prepared in order to project their career in France because we support them in their projects. Conclusion and reflection. Well, some points that I think are important to accompany athletes towards a high level. Well, technique, working on a shot technique and movement uh, it needs to be done until you're 15 or to 17 years old and even after even at until the very end of your career in order to learn new techniques you need to work a lot in the beginning you need to understand uh, the rhythm of the game many players have a very monotone rhythm of game and this is not just about changing speed but also how you use the space um, of the court. And I'm talking about in 3D. It's not just about the length and the width, but also the height. You need to think of the quality of the shot 
in order to do uh, variations in the rhythm of play. I think that it's also important to um, make the athletes responsible of their own progression as, as it was done in Denmark. What I realized uh, was that, well, in Denmark we had uh, more specific projects, but the fact that I was responsible of my own physical plan allowed me to Uh, progress in a more specific way. I think that if you give more responsibilities to the athlete on their own sports project, you are involving him or her more in their activity. And of course, working on stress management is really important, especially if we work on based, especially if we work with a, a coach on physical preparation. That's something that we've tried to, to establish here with Be Benjamin in order to bring someone who can help uh, our girls because they might be feeling stressed and we want to make them more comfortable so the game can be a little bit more interesting to them and always try to give them a sec to give athletes a second chance because For example, I wasn't that motivated. I lost my motivation after being in the provincial center. I pretty much uh, would lose all my all the matches where I played, and the fact that I when when I left the team and had a different objective that made me become better. That was my best decision. I wouldn't have had a second chance in a different place without that second chance. I wouldn't have reached uh, or. Or achieve what I achieved. I wouldn't have had this uh, high level, inter this international high level. And there are other girls in China who are in the same situation who have, and you can have a study project. Maybe they want to uh, play badminton, but maybe uh, do that at the same time, do something else in parallel with studies. Maybe. Uh, so it's important to accompany those athletes who are willing to come back to play badminton because when they come back, they are a lot more determined many times. Another reflection is related to the psychological and mental work. Uh, many times uh, athletes uh, experience an evolution in their motivation. When I was younger, I wanted to play badminton because I wanted to hang out with my friends. But very quickly... Uh, with the train, with training, well, I I realized okay, I cannot go backwards. I have to keep uh, playing badminton and reach high level, uh, because that uh, you could go to uh important competitions and be a professional when you are thirteen years old. So that's uh, uh, that was our motivation because that's why we wanted to do it and to uh, get it to go beyond that, and I think that coaches can accompany that. Uh, desire to become that kind of uh, athlete. Uh, the real willingness to be that athlete. And motivation changes things. It can evolve, it can change, depending on the environment where you're in, depending on what you've lived. A change in your family, for example, a physical change. or, And I think that coaches... Uh, should try to understand the athlete and talk with them in order to understand what they can do and what uh, the athlete wants to do so you can so the coach can accompany him or her as much as possible it's a bit difficult to uh, go into details but well I think that working on imagination is also really important to make progress I'm talking about the technique technical progress. I think that we can imagine a way of playing. For example, back then I used to imagine that I was playing like doing Tai, tai Chi. I would use other strengths uh, in order to defend myself uh, when playing. And when you work with your imagination and your shots and you are aiming at high level, it's important to imagine how you can also uh, imitate those gestures, those that type of uh, 
uh, game. So imagination can help you make progress. And once again, you have to build your confidence and find pleasure in playing. That's something that it's really important. We need to build on your own your your confidence in yourself, and that's a a permanent work. It's not something that uh, you need to do and that's it. No, you have to continue doing that in order to be confident in yourself. And that also comes from people who are surrounding us. If the person who accompanies us uh, uh, believes in us, we can make progress uh, so they can believe in others, but also in themselves. So you can be better if you work with someone who you trust. Because you create a strong relationship with the person who's uh, helping us and accompanying us in our high performance uh, journey. And of course, you have to enjoy the game. Because if you saw the match with Kevin Cordon, who almost won the medal. He was hopeful, but you can tell how he was enjoying playing in the court. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I I ran out of time. I'm sorry, Adrian. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you for this exchange. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you for your time. Uh, that you gave me to uh, share my experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Pion Yang. Your presentation has been quite interesting. I have two questions for you, so I'm going to be very brief. Can you please give me two key points that you think are very important, that were very important in your training in China and in Europe? I would say, well, the training volume in China was really important for young athletes in order to perfect their technique. And the, but the training quality in Europe, in Denmark and French, that's quite interesting. I would say that communication uh, was also important. I really liked communication in France. Oh, in Europe in general. The way in which you can have a discussion with your coach, you can communicate your ideas with him. And that's something very important because the coach can get more feedback from the athlete. So there's good communication. But in China communication is from the coach to the athlete and that's it and for young athletes this could be a bit problematic then of course this depends on each coach but yeah I think that what's important uh, for them is volume training volume uh, in young athletes is more oriented towards intensity the more the, the older they get um, and then you see quality so it's important for coaches to adapt to the evolution and the age of the athlete in order to have a good progression you need to take into account that they are different ages and we don't have the same needs at every age I don't know if this is clear or not because I'm not sure if I understood your question correctly Yeah, it's good. Well, thank you very much. We understand that you were part of the uh, group of people who promoted uh, um, Paris as being the host for the next Olympic Games 2024. So we hope that you'll have the, the French team will have a really good results in those Olympic Games. So thank you. And we hope to see you very soon in one of our programs.
Thank you very much. I also hope to have、uh, many French athletes in the Olympic Games 2024 and that they have their time to shine because they're very hopeful. And I think that, well, this time they didn't achieve their objectives, but we have、uh, young athletes who are, who, who are going to、uh, keep growing. So, They'll have their time to shine then in Paris. And congratulations to you too, uh, uh, Pan America, for your participation in Tokyo. Kevin has been an example、uh, for other countries like mine, to all young athletes. Because you should actually、uh, enjoy playing regardless of your level and competitions. Perfect. Thank you very much. See you soon. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we thank you for joining us and we hope that. Today's session, that、uh, you like today's session. Greetings, everyone. Take care and see you soon.